Welcome back to another episode of T3 TrueNAS Tech Talk. In this episode, the Chris is do a deep dive on the upcoming Spotlight Search feature and answer some exciting user questions about certificates and how the apps can handle storage in the future. Let's recap the episode. The big news this week is that GoldEye RC1 is being released. RC1, or Release Candidate 1, is going to be the last release candidate before the official release in October and will be very close to the official version. The majority of this episode was used to do a deep dive on the Spotlight feature on Half Moon for Mac. This may be something which is added for some and Linux in the future if the protocol is compatible. The service will be called TrueSearch, which will be started when you enable Spotlight support and will include indexing as well as search functionality. When it starts up for the first time, it will build the index inside of a database to include file name and metadata scraping. This is not for analyzing file contents themselves. The index time will depend on the number of files and not the size of the files themselves. You can search while indexing is happening, since building the index may take some time depending on the number of files you have. After the index is built, the entire index does not need to be rebuilt. In other words, if you have new files, modified files, or you delete files, those will be either added or removed to the index. You do not have to rebuild the whole index from scratch just because you add or remove or delete files. Chris tested this on a small test system. He indexed 5 million image files, and he said it took about two gigabytes of RAM to hold the index. He was able to index at 200 files per second, but this was bound by the disk IO. In the event that you had something faster than a four x four in a RAID Z1, his file per second index rate would have improved. His goal is to get the indexer up to 1 billion files per second, and but that's a theoretical maximum. On to user questions. The first user question asked about showing the space used per VDEV. And this was mainly used for things like special VDEVs, where if you have a cache, it helps to know how much of that VDEV space is taken up and whether or not you're close to running out of space on your special VDEV. Right now, that functionality kind of exists in the ZFS file system command, but there's no UI for it. So depending on user demand, this may be something that's implemented in the future. If it's something you want to see, go ahead and jump on the TrueNAS forms and let them know this is a feature that you're interested in. The next question had to do with Let's Encrypt Certificate Management. The Chris's have hinted that a companion service is coming to this because their desire is to see everything on TrueNAS be HTTPS compatible with active and valid certs. This means that instead of having to generate these manually right now as we have to do by hand and then importing them, there may be something built into the UI that allows an automatic generation of Let's Encrypt certificates for your TrueNAS server. Having a certificate certificate for TrueNAS itself managed inside the TrueNAS UI would be a big ad, especially considering the fact that on the last episode, they talked about the certificate authority for TrueNAS will be deprecated in the next version. So it will no longer be able to act as a certificate signing authority. The next user question was about MinIO. The user wanted to know whether or not MinIO can be distributed across multiple TrueNAS instances. And the answer to that is yes. You can essentially run a MinIO container on many different TrueNAS servers, all pointed at a single S3 backend. So if you're the kind of person that needs distributed backup like that, this is completely possible using the enterprise container for MinIO. So if you don't have the enterprise train enabled for your apps, go ahead and go to your app settings and click the enterprise train. There was talk about possible plans in the future not to use the IX applications data set for apps. The biggest challenge with managing apps for TrueNAS is the fact that the IX applications data set is not very clear on how the data is actually Actually stored and where the data goes and just in general it makes it more complicated to run docker apps that use this data set by default in the future the chris has openly said he would like to do just a dedicated data set that's much more straightforward for storing the data that's used by the docker containers on the host in the TrueNAS form for this episode the talk is mainly about how voting goes for features that will be voted into TrueNAS. Now, just because we vote for features doesn't mean they're going to be developed. We can vote for things that are completely ridiculous and that is way too difficult for the IX team to develop that has way too small of a user base to make a difference. So there's a lot of talk in these comments about how the voting works and what gets merged in and how the decision making goes for that. My recommendation would be if you want to jump in and have a conversation about how the features get added to TrueNAS, do it in a way that's very constructive. Some of these comments are not so constructive and are just very critical. Please make sure that all the discourse that gets put on this form is something that's going to be helpful for the community and not just complaints about how things are broken. This has been another summary episode of T3 TrueNAS Tech Talk. Go ahead and leave us a comment below to let me know what you thought about this episode and the content that we just covered. If you have technical questions, please jump on our Service at Home Discord server. And if you wanna thank me personally, there's a link below to buy me a coffee.